Welcome to Salvation TV. We produce and upload contents that provoke and prepare you for revival. With quality spiritual videos to feed your spirit daily. The salvation of souls into the kingdom of God is of utmost importance to us. For by grace we are saved through faith and not of ourselves, for it is the gift of God. Do subscribe and turn on the post notification bell to stay updated with us daily. Don't forget also to like and share this video. God bless you. Welcome to Salvation TV. This is a platform for spiritual growth and edification of the body of Christ in the Middle East. My brothers and sisters, welcome. Today we are here on this channel to learn some powerful keys. The keys that provoke the divine intervention of the Almighty God. Brethren, I want you to know that on this channel, you are here to learn, to be mentored, to be baptized into this body of the spiritual truth. According to Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 says, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Meaning we do come here daily on this channel to be fed with divine knowledge and understanding of God's word for our spiritual growth. Brethren, what are the keys, the factors that provoke the divine intervention in any of our issues of life? Please, I want you to sit back to learn the mystery behind this divine intervention of God. And I believe after watching this video, we will all be blessed and have divine encounter of God in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 defines in very clear terms the assignment of a true shepherd. Jeremiah chapter 3, please give it to us and verse 15. The assignment of a true shepherd. I will give you pastors according to my heart. And if they are according to my heart, they have the singular assignment to feed you with knowledge and feed you with understanding. That means knowledge and understanding are divine meals. When you are served with this meal of knowledge and of understanding, there is a predictable outcome. You will become something very exact, very intentional. I will give you pastors after my heart. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, the Bible says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. These are the requirements for growth and maturity in the spirit. Submission to doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, prayers. So every time we gather, I will not fail to let us know that we are here gathered to learn to be mentored, to be baptized into an exact body of spiritual truth. Realize that every time we meet, there is a making, there is an evolution, there is a transition that is happening to us. It is not the same version of you who came two weeks ago that is seated now. No, light is transiting you. You will get to a point where you are so full of the light and the power of the Holy Spirit the results will begin to speak inevitably they will speak hallelujah the Lord put a very powerful teaching in my heart and I'm sent to the body of Christ primarily even though koinonia as a global family is anointed us to minister his word but most of the teachings that I bring are for the body of Christ regardless denomination regardless your the doctrinal differences that seem to divide us it is part of the reason why he brought us to this city and has projected us to the nations as instruments of unity balance dexterity and growth are we together We are lifted and we are strengthened in this kingdom 
not based on our longevity in the faith no time does not change anything time only reveals a 10 year old error can still destroy like a one year old error provided it is error are we together it takes understanding light it says but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light so tonight i pray in the name of jesus christ world over azaria family abuja family here and all who are following from their homes please pay attention if you are distracted when the word of god is coming be sure it is an attack it's an attack because it takes focus and concentration to receive there is an intellectual dimension to the reception of the word it's not just a spiritual affair alone your mind has to be active your mind has to be fruitful so even if your spirit is alive and your mind is distracted you see that that's why sometimes before the message comes god quickly settles issues like this because some of those issues are the things that distract people from listening while the word of god is coming someone is thinking how do i battle this issue how do i battle that issue praise the name of the lord hmm. psalm 34 and verse 9 exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 let's go to exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 no matter who you are no matter your spiritual level your intellectual level you will get to a point in your life and your destiny listen carefully where there will be a need for a supernatural intervention in your life over the affairs of your destiny remember that what we receive every week here we are handed keys the assignment of keys is not only to open doors but to give you confidence that you cannot be limited the presence of keys suggests that you can no longer be confined and limited you can open the door at will and close the door at will revelations 3 7 and 8 right i'm he that was dead and now is alive and i hold the key of david please go back to verse seven he of david he that openeth by reason of that key no man can shut and he that shut it and no man can open because of a key that you hold these revelations and these mysteries are keys that grant us grace to command victory the victory of christ and the finished work of christ will remain prophecy and only remain a potential the reality of it is activated on the strength of the light that we know and we understand thoroughly articulated and then empowered by the spirit of god when you receive that revelation the grace for performance also comes with the revelation you see how it works you're not going to receive a grace for a dimension when the understanding of that dimension is not yet fruitful in your life so the anointing of the holy spirit follows revelations the anointing for prosperity follows the revelation of prosperity the anointing for spiritual growth follows the revelation for spiritual growth if you want the anointing you must want the understanding that brings and preserves that anointing are we together exodus 3 and verse 8 let's get to work very quickly and i am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey and unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. I am come down to deliver them. Divine intervention is one of the mysteries that provides a system of advantage to believers. Now, as you know, our dominion in this kingdom is based on the light that we have 
but also based on the systems of advantage that we access no one is advantaged by default uh -uh. for as long as you are born here on earth doesn't matter if you come from a rich family you may have a financial advantage but that does not necessarily translate into a spiritual advantage are we together now through the revelation of god's word we begin to incorporate into our lives through the understanding of scripture systems of advantage favor mercy are we together speed relationships the anointing understanding wisdom so that you now begin to introduce these spiritual forces into your life and your destiny and in no time you will see that your life begins to reflect the image and the character of the christ in reality my little children he said of whom i travail until christ be formed in you he was speaking to believers those who were already saved but he was talking about the formation of christ it's one thing to potentially be a recipient of the life of God but the fullness and the riches of that life is released through understanding Ephesians 4 and verse 18 having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart Psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you not some are children of the most high the next verse says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes bankruptcy of spiritual knowledge can even though you are saved you may never be able to walk in the fullness of those potentials an heir the bible says as long as he's a child he differeth not from a slave even though he's an heir but provided he's a child void of understanding void of spiritual intelligence he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all he's under tutors and governors so it takes light isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new life are we blessed I'm saying all this so that the Lord will by this teaching alongside others plant in us a hunger for exact spiritual growth this shadow boxing of trying principles here and there when we are confronted with issues most the average believer please look up listen to me the average believer does not know which key to apply when faced with challenges so as to command victory so the typical believer the typical church goer will begin to engage all kinds of things blood of jesus holy ghost fire communion offering and just shadow box them here and there in hope that one will walk and truly one will walk and the danger is because it did not come by mastery you will fear your result because you are sure that you cannot reproduce it again but paul said he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he thrives lawfully there, there has to be a desperation and a passion in your heart i'm hungry for you hungry for you i have come to the table to eat i'm thirsty for you thirsty for you i have come to the waters to drink now tarry and not let you go that's just the part i wanted to sing for you to hear like jacob lord change my life not through superstition but through exact exegesis of truth let me not move around just saying i am a christian no results or results once a year not bringing glory to the name of the lord no 
and then not just succeeding in your spiritual life alone and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and God had blessed him in all things don't sit down and justify mediocrity because you are doing well spiritually no you must embrace the entire counsel of God there is only one thing that is greater than the truth the whole truth the whole truth are we blessed divine intervention Daniel chapter 3 let's study scripture Daniel chapter 3 Daniel chapter 3 my goodness God is changing someone's life Daniel 3 from verse 23 please very quickly Daniel 3 23 and these three Shadrach Meshach Abednego fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace follow carefully we are reading to 30 then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire follow carefully they answered and said unto the king true O king he answered and said lo I see four men lose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart and the form of the fourth is like the son of God Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said Shadrach Meshach Abednego ye servants of the most high God come forth and they come hither then Shadrach Meshach and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire uh-huh and the princes watch this governors captains kings counselors being gathered together saw this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power there are men like that men whose bodies the fire had no power nor was an air out of their head singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed upon them as a result 28 ne king nebuchadnezzar spake and said blessed be the god of shadrach i don't know his name but i know those who represent him i will name him by their victory blessed be the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and has changed the king's word. A king's word can be changed though. Yes, sir. Oh, I vow you will not rise. A king's word can be changed. And yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. 29 look at the victory that this brought to the name of the lord therefore i make a decree that every people nation language which speak anything amiss against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego they shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort and the king promoted shadrach Meshach, Abednego, Joshua Selman. Have you forgotten the Bible says this promise is unto you and your children, your children's children, as many as are far off whom the Lord shall call. What is divine intervention? Write very quickly, please. We have a lot to do tonight and we have to rush. Divine intervention is said to occur when God steps in by God here we mean the God of the Bible Almighty El Shaddai when God steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around divine intervention happens when God steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around ultimately bringing glory to the name of the Lord 
ultimately bringing glory to the name of the Lord don't forget to add that so when God steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around ultimately bringing glory to the name of the Lord Galatians 1 24 and they glorified God in me through the excellency of his wonder working power upon my life they glorified God in me John 15 verse 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples there are times in our lives in our families where we will require divine intervention because the help of man we will get to a point where the help of man can fail the bible is not careful as to the limitation of the help of men and the frailty of the energy of the flesh it says for by the arm of flesh the bible declares no man can prevail are we together why do we need inter divine intervention because satan and his cohorts listen carefully satan and his cohorts are determined to thwart the purposes of god in the life of the saints the bible lets us know that there is a real devil john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy look at it very carefully that means the thief has no business coming around a life until there is something to steal there is something to kill and there is something to destroy then the bible says i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly satan is determined to see that the purposes of god over the life of the saints individually and then corporately as a body that God's divine purposes are thwarted and so he does that listen carefully he does that by introducing negative circumstances to our spiritual work and then our destiny work in general so you begin your work of faith and either through wrong decisions on your own part through ignorance and so on and so forth for many of you who have listened to my teaching on the mystery of deliverance it's helped the body in no small way i teach there that there are three principal channels listen carefully there are three principal channels from scripture through which demons and satan attack and buffet the saints number one covenants 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 the legal system of the kingdom number two disobedience number three ignorance these are the only three ways from scripture anyone at all whoever faces any attack from satan anyone at all who becomes a victim of the assaults of satan one or more or all these channels were the doorways he used to access your life i repeat one covenants the strongest of them all two ignorance three disobedience hallelujah and so the devil will bring negative situations around our lives they can come through the ministry the negative ministry of men they can come by manipulating systems and structures look at Jesus Jesus came to the earth to become a portrait a pattern man to help men see and know God's intent number two he came as perfect theology correcting our ideas about God number three he came to fulfill that role of a mediator through his substitutionary sacrifice to the end that men may be saved from his birth there was an attack there needed to be a divine intervention are we together now yes an innocent young virgin whose life was interrupted because a savior was about to be born that was not enough because of jesus they killed his age mates two years and below women cried 
because the devil was looking for a destiny to destroy the moment he announced that he was messiah people systems were orchestrated by the devil to fight him the religious leaders the political leaders the government of the day came into unity to fight him to a point where they were willing to release an umbrella someone who was already confirmed to be a nuisance to society let barabbas go but let this one be killed satan's determination to kill jesus was so high god had to incorporate it in the strategy for victory satan will leave no stone unturned to see to it that my destiny and your destiny if allowed becomes shredded in pieces listen just because you've given your heart to jesus christ and you are sincere and well-meaning does not mean the devil will leave you and say i'm aware there's the mark of the blood on you no no he left jesus for a season came back through peter came back through judas on the third day when jesus was going to arise they locked up the grave sealed it and there were men who were seated and the bible says the angel came with power rolled the stone and sat on it jesus resurrected he left and the men came together they said look um something is wrong let's come together and re they received money and lied that the disciples came and stole his body that's how determined satan is to make sure that destinies never go forward it is not strange and it did not start with you satan's antagonism towards us and our families did not start with us it's, it's a vendetta that predates our coming it's been an ancient war anything that brings glory to the name of jesus anything that advances the purposes of god is satan's business invited or not so when they were dedicating you as they lifted you like jesus was lifted it's not only members that came for that child dedication the devil was also hearing let me hear what this priest will say about this oh lord this child called joshua selman i lift him up before you let him be a blessing to the nations and the devil said what did you say i had blessing now i'm interested not because of what else you said that means there is something about kingdom come in his life you become an intentional project listen carefully oh why don't they like me who did i offend all that statement is just a superstitious talk the condition listen the qualification for an attack is that you are born the moment you pass through the womb of a woman you are qualified enough for an attack then when he sees you giving your life to jesus i hope you know demons witness these things lord jesus i give you everything and they are watching and you are rolling on the ground rolling in the house of god and saying my heart is yours my life and my destiny they know satan was once in heaven he knows the implication of genuine surrender he knows you are making yourself usable and he says do you know what let's isolate this person and twat and rubbish the purposes of god in his life and can i tell you provided you are still wearing this mortal body somewhere in the equation of your life you will fall short of obedience somewhere in the equation of your life through ignorance there will be some level of access until you learn what you need to know you will be a victim of the ignorance of it so satan will catch into that moment this is why we need divine intervention it was a system of advantage that was programmed by God's wisdom so that if by any means through ignorance through wrong decisions it is on the strength of mysteries like this Paul can say we know that all things even something that should make you fail there is still a provision in the economy of God where you can be delivered someone shout amen, amen. yes sir so when you say you are a Christian, you are not saying you are a follower of a religion whose founder is Jesus. No. You are saying you are one who by the privilege of God's grace, one you have been made a partaker of the life of God, justified. Are we together in Christ? 
number two you are saying you are one who through spiritual understanding you have been surrounded with mysteries like chariots these are the forces that help you to walk in victory experientially these forces of the kingdom continue to cancel away every negative prophecy over your life let's see what that family will become they are right except that when you bring out one mystery one arsenal from that spiritual toolbox you can end something that was supposed to be so one of those mysteries in addition to the much you have received is called the mystery of divine intervention god did not leave us without his presence he did not leave us without his backing listen carefully there are three levels at which we encounter the power of god number one i need to say this before i begin to explain a few things number one the first level is a personal encounter where we meet god as a person an encounter that is the highest level you receive power from that level god directly number two there is a dimension of God's power that is programmed in principles. You don't need to know him. You don't need to believe him to experience that dimension of his power. The moment you are compliant to and with the principle, for instance, you can be an assassin or an armed robber and still sow during the rainy season and your crops will grow. It's the dimension of God's power that sponsors that growth. But it was programmed in principles. You don't need a relationship nor an encounter to enjoy that dimension of his power this is a dimension that many unbelievers have tapped into business principles they have built systems structures they have built a very civilized society based on those principles even though they may not honor the god that powers that principle are we together so the first is a personal encounter with the god of the bible second is obedience and compliance to principles principles work because at the back of them there is an investment of a dimension of god's power and then the third way we receive power in this kingdom is through covenant alignment with men and women covenant alignment with men and women who god has trusted with certain graces direct encounter with god compliance and obedience to principles then covenant alignment with men and women. I just needed to chip that in so that you'll understand what I'm about to explain. Are we together? The mystery of divine encounters. It is on the strength of these truths you access the power of God and you begin to walk in such level of victory one level and dimension of victory to the other one level of victory and you see by this your life shows in truth that the victory of Christ over sin over death over Satan was absolute and true creation is waiting for the richness of the manifestation of God's power and grace in and through your life to validate the reality of every claim that Jesus made in and through his finished work. That means I can become a poor representation of the victory of Christ through the plethora of defeats that my life command. My life can be so defeated, it does not look attractive to be a Christian. I can misrepresent the purposes of God so every time I contend for superior dimensions of these mysteries, it is to the end that we become empowered and then we become trophies, if you would use that expression, that men can look at our lives and say, no, it pays to subscribe to this government. Are we together? In business, we teach that the greatest way to market is to tell the truth. There's no fear when you are telling the truth. Is that true? When you package and you lie, you are afraid of the truth being discovered. So if we are marketing a God to our world, we are marketing Jesus Christ, and we are telling the world he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life, they will say we may not be able to see him, but let's look at you who are seeing him, and let's look at what he has done to you. From the assessment of your victory, the quality of your life,
it is safe for us to now conclude if this your jesus is a better alternative to the charm that i've been using if this your jesus is a better alternative to this god i'm serving nobody lives better for good nobody lives best for better so if we are selling a jesus to our world and letting them know that he is savior he is mighty the ancient of days we must be able to present him in a way and manner that dumbfounds principalities and powers it is on this strength the bible says ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 to the intent this is why he's blessed us so richly with all these mysteries to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church his bride his body the manifold wisdom of god are we together yes distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us as can now give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart distant shores and the islands will see do you know why we teach this we teach these truths number one because god loves us and he wants us to experience the highest level of victory that our obedience can afford us in this side of god's kingdom and in this side of eternity but number two we do these things because there is a world that is watching and they are depending on the testimony of god's grace upon our lives for the decision that affects their eternal destiny are we together have you seen marketers of products look up please there are a few people here some of you may be you know company owners and you have all kinds of products and services and look the level of training that goes in to teach the marketers because you are about to defend the image and the interest of a company you are marketing a product that probably expires after six months or after two years and look the skill that goes in make sure you're well suited make sure your communication is is very articulate make sure you smile whether you are tired or not look at all that skill we employ the people give them a salary motivate them and send them and even when they see their classmates or their loved ones or their brothers on the street they are not even ashamed. they are so proud of what they are selling and yet the validity is just six months the validity is just two years but we are selling something here that has the eternal destiny of man listen carefully it is truly evil to refuse your life from commanding certain levels of results because by doing it you are the the destiny of millions are depending on your results so if you truly love god don't just say i love god you must contend for superior levels of results let your light so shine before men i need to put this in perspective because many times when they hear preachers talk like this um there is a spirit of religion that will usually want to fight people when they teach to empower people once it is not a talk about jesus and a direct talk about holiness and righteousness respectfully speaking a lot of people frown at it and they feel you are wasting people's time no we teach the whole counsel of god everything together they will weave themselves and add up to the revelation of the christ and the glorification of the same we have been marketing jesus wrongly that's why the world has been slapping that gospel back at our face we need to reinvent our strategy come up with power come up with results nobody runs away from what works are we together so I need to say this because there are many people who want to receive these truths but the spirit of religion can loom around people's hearts and not let them to be equipped and they go blindly with zeal that does not have knowledge 
Oh, I want to serve Jesus. And they die like chickens because they are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual knowledge that keeps them in victory. I believe in the whole counsel of God. Look the kind of bride that Jesus is coming for. Come and I will show you the lamb's wife. And he showed me a city equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in depth. No exaggeration. That is the lamb's wife. That is the bride that he's coming for. He's not coming for some lopsided bride. There is no bride who does not adorn herself very well on the wedding day. There is no bride who forgets her makeup, forgets her shoe, and just comes to stand. No matter how much you're in a hurry. If you want to present yourself as that bride, get serious about every aspect of your spiritual life. Get serious about every aspect of your destiny. If God tells you, I want to use your resources to glorify Jesus, then ensure that those resources are to the degree that can command kings. Can I tell you this? The arrogant world that we live in will depend on a high level of results for the kings of the land to hear you. Ordinary people can hear you no matter what you are saying. But our target is not just the people. We also need the kings because the kings have influence look what happened to Zacchaeus one encounter with Jesus saved many people who he had defrauded are we blessed these are principles of kingdom advance we have a series on that but for now it's important for you to submit to embrace the whole counsel of God there are demons, there are arsenals of darkness. Hear me, brothers and sisters. They are going to come and attempt to attack your life. But you need the truth of God's word. The Bible says, write this down. Psalm 11 from verse 9, the B part. Proverbs 11, I meant to say from verse 9. The B part. It says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Through knowledge. Submitting to spiritual knowledge. Is indicating your interest to truly be delivered and to walk in victory so divine intervention is real it's a spiritual arsenal that must be part of our equipping as believers is part of the forces that make us matured and help us thrive and reign in life and tonight very quickly I'm going to give us four keys four keys that command divine intervention in the life of an individual in the life of a family use these keys and you will triumph bringing glory to the name of the lord bringing honor to the name of jesus christ are you ready key number one prayer key number one the first key that makes for divine intervention you want to see the power of God come to change negative circumstances over your life. You want to see the power of God come to establish positive outcomes in your life to the end that Jesus be revealed and be glorified. The first key is prayer. The priesthood ministry of prayer. Psalms 18. Please give us the first six verses. We'll do a few readings. So please be patient. Psalm 18 from verse 1 to 6. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Next verse. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God and my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. We're reading to verse 6 and then I'll mention a few verses. We'll just jump to them. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Uh-huh. The sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Verse 5. The sorrows of hell compassed me about and the snares of death prevented me. Verse 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and I cried unto my God and he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears very quickly jump to verse 14 14 17 and then go to verse 40 for time's sake yea he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out lightings and discomfited them verse 17 
he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me go to verse 40 thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that i might destroy them that hate me next verse we are reading to 50 please quickly they cried but there was none to save them even unto the lord but he answered them not 42 then did i beat them small as the dust before the wind i did cast them out as the dirt in the street uh-huh it says thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people and thou hast made me the head of the hidden a people whom i have not known shall serve me 44 as soon as they hear of me they shall obey me and strangers shall submit themselves unto me we are reading to 50 the strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places the lord leave it and blessed be my rock and let the god of my salvation be exalted it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me he delivered me from my enemies yea thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me thou hast delivered me from the violent man two more verses therefore i will give thanks unto thee o lord among the heathen and sing praises unto your name verse 50 great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed to david and to his seed forevermore deliverance listen to me in my distress i cried he didn't just come i called him in prayer the ministry of prayer is very very powerful write this down for reference acts chapter 12 please from verse 5 is a popular scripture here to 11 this was peter when he was bound kept in prison here's what the bible says Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. As a result, um, Herod now wanting people to come and kill him the next time. And then verse 7 says that behold an angel of the Lord in response to prayer came unto him. A light shined in the prison. He smote Peter saying arise and his chains fell from his hands. Uh-huh and the angel said unto him guard thyself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me we we'll read down to 10 let's go to 10 very quickly the bible says when they were past the first and the second word or gate they came to the gate that leaded to the city which opened unto them of his own accord and they went out and passed on through one street and forth with the angel departed from him last verse the bible now says and when peter was come to himself he said now i know of a shorty that the lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of herod and from all the expectations of the people god does not just deliver you from men he delivers you from expectations are we together but that happens at the instance of prayer in acts chapter 16 when you read from verse 25 down to 34 the full text we may not read everything the bible talks about paul and silas are we together on account of a lady who they delivered who used divination to bring money for people and now one thing led to the other they were in the prison give it to us please acts chapter 16 from verse 25 here's what the bible says at midnight pay attention Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them 26 suddenly my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by please keep the scripture suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately how many doors 
financial doors, health doors, ministry doors, business doors, doors of your spiritual growth. When it is a divine intervention, it's not a few doors. All doors open. All doors open. All doors open. And everyone's band was loose, 27. And the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Now, follow the result of divine intervention. But Peter cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Uh-huh. And he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling as a result of that divine intervention. He fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do? That is it, to be saved. That man's salvation was at the mercy of the result that intervention would bring. Every genuine intervention in the Bible eventually led to the salvation of men and drew men close to Jesus. Let's finish up. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who now caused that intervention, and thou shalt be saved, and it will now affect your household. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. Are you seeing now? One divine intervention from the prison, now the man is saved, and his entire household. And he took the same, and he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized he and all his straight away last verse and when he had brought them into his house he said meat before them the same person who flogged them is now feeding them and rejoiced believing in God with all his house whoever you want to lift Lord, you can live through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. Whoever you want to save, Lord, you can save through me. The salvation of a man and his entire family not just depending on a crusade depending on someone's results but it came through prayer apostle james taught us in chapter 5 and verse 13 he says if any of you are afflicted let him pray the moment you sense that there is an affliction you came back home your children are sick your husband returns back and he says i don't know what is happening in the office You lost money in business. Everything gone. They collected your land, your property. These are events that require divine intervention. Your first port of call is to begin to pray. This is why God gave us the prayer language of tongues. It's not a Pentecostal issue. The Bible says we have a limitation. The limitation is that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to, but the Holy Spirit. Ah, he knows, oh, he knows how to make intercession. So I lock myself while I am praying my mind may be unfruitful but there is the intercessory ministry of the Holy Spirit. Prayer. Praying in the Spirit but not just praying in the Spirit. Word based prophetic declarations. I'm showing you how to provoke intervention. You cannot take the word of God out of the equation word based not superstitious prophetic declarations word based prophetic declarations two scriptures we're still talking on prayer isaiah 43 and verse 26 believers learn this 43 26 isaiah put me in remembrance he says let us plead together he says declare thou that thou mightest be justified my hand is able to save my hand is able to lift, but I'm waiting for you to declare. Hmm. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies, anointing my head with fresh oil. My cup runs over. You are declaring, I have no covenant with death. In the name of Jesus, I declare, as for me and my house, you are making declarations because you are seeing storms rising. You don't keep quiet when storms rise. The worst thing to do is to be silent. Hear me, I'm speaking to you because there are people, storms all around your life. When they woke Jesus Christ, he did not discuss with the storm. Peace, be still. Your spiritual life, suddenly your fire for prayer, down. Your passion for the word, down. Favor, down. Everything, down. You should know that you are surrounded. That there is something. That is the time to open up your mouth. I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is my light and salvation. This is not just a Pentecostal thing. It's a formula for victory. Declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Oh, I reject death. I reject death in the name of Jesus. Don't feel bad and feel that's how this one said it and died. That's none of your business. You speak. You do your own part and declare over your destiny. I choose life. I said before you life and death. I choose life. I choose health. I choose victory by the Spirit of God. thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side but none shall harm me with my eyes will I see the reward of the wicked I arise and shine because my light is come the glory of the Lord is risen upon me Gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my rising for my shame I receive double where I've been deserted so that no man help them please passes through me I become an eternal excellency a joy of many generations prayer listen please sit down the moment believers learn this world over the moment you see an unfavorable situation in your life you know it is the devil because along with that situation will come the spirit of depression and the assignment of depression is to keep you silent listen to what i'm telling you I'm not a medical doctor. I'm speaking as a man of God. I know that depression has an assignment to keep you silent. Satan is the master of the flesh realm. So this is how my life will be. I thought this will work. I had a dream and I thought the job would come. And you now keep quiet. And the angels are saying, look at this. There is a law. We are ready to move. God is ready. Help them please. God is ready to move. Psalms 107 verse 2 these are the arsenals of victory Psalms 107 please very quickly let the redeemed of the Lord if they are truly the redeemed don't just think so don't just wish so say so let the lifted of the Lord say so let the breast of the Lord say so are you learning now You return back and there is a medical report that is disturbing. Just when that is happening, your child brings a result. After spending so much on his school fees, you see an evil report. Are we together? The moment that is happening, you just hear that your investment has crashed. You're a politician. They told you, okay, this is supposed to be your position. You're a man of God. You come to church and it looks like everything is going down. That's not the time to be quiet. And that's not the time to attract sympathy. You are the first prophet of your destiny. Go and shut your door. Remove your CEO regalia. Put on that priestly robe. Shake up Someone blast in the spirit in one minute.
I won't be silent in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, listen, believers, hear me. Hold on, hold on. Do you know that many believers allow tragedy to mount until it presses them down? That's when they resort to God as a last option. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. Make this comment and put your destiny. As long as I am Listen, an evil report is happening. Your children are going haywire. As the man, you are not just ahead of the home for nothing. Wear your priestly regalia while your children are sleeping. Walk room by room. You are laying hands upon them, not my house. I build the spiritual fortification by prophesying. I decree and declare the foolishness of faith. I engage it. The righteousness of faith speaks from this wise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I will help you. Come and meet me tomorrow. And you come tomorrow and say, what, who asked you to come here? This favor, just when you are going, your car hit someone. Just when you learn to read the signs. Don't wait for evil to stay. Don't be along with evil. Attack it from infancy. Don't be along with evil. Attack it from infancy. Hallelujah. You go to bed in the night and you have a funny dream that you know already shows that there is an attack that the spirit of death is following people in your family listen don't just wake up and write it in a jotter and, and then when it happens you say, no get up and say no way in the name of jesus I, if he followed my father and my father's father i call as a priest i'm a king and a priest what based declaration listen it was it was god's servant bishop david oyedeko who said no matter how mad a man is he will not enter inside fire by mistake and say it's confusion no matter how mad he is when he sees fire he says he makes his angels winds and his ministers flaming fire you're sleeping and someone takes your name to a shrine for political reasons oh let this person die or let this person not win you don't have to go to the shrine right from where you are listen believers hear me this is not just some spiritual jamboree the times that we live in it will be risky to not know these truths and to not engage them your life literally hangs upon these truths let the redeemed of the lord say so please sit down please sit down let me challenge you i want to challenge every family here as much as god grants grace provided you and your wife are in agreement set one day this week even if it's for 30 minutes 
hold your hands walk around that house identify anything that does not look like Christ zoom your tongues to it scatter it as if it does not exist yes sir yes sir no my womb will not give birth to armed robbers as a woman you lay your hands or sit down and watch things go bad just help those under the anointing there is a strong anointing in this place because this is a message for the body of Christ divine intervention comes on the wings of prayer a prayerless church no matter what else you have is a powerless church a wordless church no matter what you have is a powerless church the ministry of prayer and the word are the foundations of the true church listen to me i'm not creating a doctrine out of this but let me challenge you obtain grace from god to wake up in the night conquer slumber the night time is when kings win is when we establish victories you're walking around your house in the night the lord told you you'll be a senator the lord told you you'll be a governor the lord told you you'll be a ceo and there are forces sitting down making decrees you don't need to fight them go to your closet this is how kings reign people of god hear me with every sense of humility that's how we got here I'm not telling you cunningly devised fables. Everything about your finances is dying, scattering. You are not lazy. You are hardworking. They are stealing from your shop. They are cheating you. They are lying. Counseling is not the solution alone. Go back and pray. There is an evil force wanting to discredit God in my life. I attack you in the name of Jesus. Listen, I don't promote the devil and I don't mean to market the devil, but I have seen many demons. I have seen many spirits by the privilege of my calling and the apostolic office. I have been exposed to the realm of the spirit. I understand scripture. I have been well mentored by fathers of faith and veterans of the gospel. The things you are hearing are not cunningly devised fables. Don't ignore it. You will spend your lifetime paying the price. We live in an evil world. Your portion will come to you by insisting. From the days of John until now, the kingdom suffered violence. It is a violence that will take it by force. Can I tell you this? There is no African family that is immune to witchcraft by default is a lie if not by bloodline by territorial connection when we pray like this we do not negate the finished work of christ we rather stand in partnership our prayer is our participatory role to establish it here and now listen as powerful as god is he did not cast sin out of men he didn't say sin i cast you out there are rules of engagement in the spirit as for me i've made up my mind god gave me this mouth not only to eat but to create my destiny and i insist for my life for this ministry silence is not just shouting and jumping around no 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 an intentional approach to your growth take responsibility listen body of christ thank god for the vessels god has given us but we must become serious and mature to become the first prophets of our destiny go and lock your door pray for me pray for me is good but you must take authority over your situation by the power of the holy ghost the mystery of divine intervention 
give this message to anyone you know and you love please sit down the first key is prayer for as long as I live I will never stop praying for as long as God has anointed me I will never stop praying for as long as this ministry God grants me the privilege of leading this ministry we will never stop praying for as long as I live I will never ignore the Word of God no matter where whatever lifts you is what sustains you don't throw it away don't throw this Bible for money don't throw this Bible for awards hold it together with the awards this is it the alternative to this is charms and witchcraft and all kinds of troubles that come with side effects I found your word and I did eat it it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul heaven and earth will pass away but the word of the Lord abides forever please hear me the only guarantee to our fulfilling the purposes of God as we await the return of Christ with honor is to get serious with this scripture please hear me you are seated here and there is an attack on your spiritual life take it seriously don't just say one day I'll think about it I am telling you now if you have been praying to confirm whether it's an attack I'm answering that prayer by the grace of God it's an attack I hope you still love me this night please pray please pray P pray for me is good but pray in the name of Jesus Christ and when you are praying I'm not being harsh on you I'm just shouting because of the passion burning in me listen by the grace of God don't be praying and browsing except if the Holy Ghost speaks to you and you are looking for scriptures quickly keep this thing aside this thing is a blessing but in the name of Jesus Christ show your dominion over it by keeping it on one side when you are praying you can't be doing too many things and focus lock the door sometimes sincere people can come to distract your prayer and study life how are you are you at home peace be unto this as politely tell them sorry I love you but I'm spending a few minutes if they love you and they love your destiny they should excuse you look live by values otherwise you will crash your spiritual life down you are praying with fasting turn every plate upside down in your house Lord there is a spirit attacking my influence there is a spirit attacking my fervency for you it didn't used to be like this what happened to my prayer fire what happened to my word fire I sleep by 7 p.m. I wake up by 9 a.m. in the morning something is wrong with my spiritual life depression speak I reject it ah, I know I lost one billion in this investment my company is in trouble I know that this has happened I know they diagnosed me with fibroid or cancer or whatever I know that there is a situation things don't seem to be adding up but let me die believing you you return back you study scripture and now the advantage we have there are many people who have gone through the labor of putting the required scripture you need just a little search online and you can find scriptures people have paid the price already if you have an office or a prayer room surround it with powerful scriptures remove pictures of when you were small and keep them aside and put scriptures while you are praying you turn this light firing from one direction I'm telling you this is the key to victory do you know why I'm telling you this so that when you rise when they ask you yes you will say it's God's grace but you will tell light you can't say I don't know what I did Jesus I know Paul I know you must register your presence in the realm of the spirit I say touch not for me for my children for all that surrounds me touch not do you know
prayer can become a habit you are praying and you just stretch for stretching for two minutes and waking up you are not fully awake but the realm of the spirit and demons will suffer just because you are before you turn back is any man afflicted let him pray can i tell you this i don't mean i don't mean to create controversy or trouble i've come to this city in peace but let me tell you this i made up my mind everybody under my roof must serve my god listen carefully you can't be under my roof at my cost and do what you want to do no no if the owner of the house is praying you should pray don't get up and say whatever no it's a it's a, it's a personal uh, um, revelation i'm not saying it must be so for you so that you don't allow people to bring all kinds of familiar spirits and loiter your house okay this is how we pray in this house you are welcome 5 a.m or 6 a.m with it's a diff if there are special cases that's all right but as much as possible the point of neglect is the access point for demons where you neglect the point of neglect many of us started raising our children well but when they became teenagers in a bid to honor them for maturity we started subtracting spiritual values you take away prayer and give your child a car you did not help the child let him pick the prayer before the car key I don't know how I got here. Please sit down. Let's let's talk about. We have to finish. So number one, prayer. Please pray, pray, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. We do not know the evil that confronts us day and night, but we can pray. It's our zone of safety. Is the formula that the Father gave us. Pray. The moment you detect things around your life that are not lining up with the purposes of God the moment you see that the agenda of God is being interrupted souls are not being saved in and through your life you are a man of God and for two weeks you made an altar call nobody came out don't laugh and say it's all right everybody is saved that's not there is no such thing as that the same way the poor you will always have with you the unsaved you will always have with you the day I spend a week in my life and my life does not save a sinner i will go on a retreat and repent before god what is the anointing for one week sunday to sunday nobody came to jesus through my life ah. nobody got healed through my life no demon was casted out nobody understood the kingdom through my life you must take that responsibility authority comes with responsibility number two very quickly the second key that provokes divine intervention in the life of believers is praise with understanding praise as an instrument of warfare praise with understanding as a weapon Three scriptures very quickly psalm 67 from verse 5 god is helping us tonight help us media let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee we're reading to verse 7 then let the earth yield her increase and god even our own god shall bless us uh-huh it says god shall bless us and all the earth shall fear him at the instance of praise it was a few years ago god gave me i don't like dancing you would have noticed i'm dancing and all of this there's no grace for me there bible says every man should abide in his calling but not when not when i am alone with god you don't dance because you can dance you dance because he's a weapon we praise i learned the power of praise praise works wonders psalm 22 verse 3 psalm 22 verse 3 but thou art holy 
O thou that inhabitest, you make praise your habitation. That everywhere there is genuine praise, it attracts the attention of God. How many of you know that if you want to invite the commissioners in a state, you want to invite the permanent secretaries, maybe the attorney generals and the rest, instead of inviting all those people one by one, invite the governor in his capacity as the governor. As he's coming, the entourage that comes with him. Somebody who told you yesterday he won't come, on hearing that his boss is coming, in the capacity, the full capacity of his office, that's what praise does. There are many things you don't know you need. Breakthrough, lifting, favor. Let praise go up. Let praises rise from the inside. From the inside. From the inside. May you be light from the inside. In the inside. Psalms 18 verse 3 where we read earlier said I will call upon the Lord who is worthy or deserving of praise by that formula of prayer mixed with praise so shall I be saved that every time I pray it does not just stop at prayer many times when we pray angels come but Paul and Silas taught us that if we want God directly when you are done praying begin to praise and he comes himself are we blessed have a selection of powerful worship and praise songs every television in your house should have a flash drive behind it with a special selection per season per moment when it looks like you are downcasted oh apostle I can't sing people have sung for you already get their songs and while they are singing you repeat after them the parts you don't know don't worry god understands jump to a part that you know and sing yes sir let me show you something judges judges chapter one from verse two we have to hurry up we're about to pray judges one from verse two look up please they were going to battle and the lord said judah shall go up first that judah judah means praise because i have delivered the land it is praise that will take delivery watch this verse 3 hmm. and judah said to simeon you know what simeon is simeon comes from the hebrew word hear or to hear that's faith that comes by hearing so praise told faith come and escort me i need to receive something it says come with me into my lot that we may fight against the canaanites praise calls faith let me do this with understanding and likewise i will go with you into your lot and faith went with praise as a result verse 4 and judah went up and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands and they slew them in Bezek, 10,000 of them. Do not downplay what praise can do. Perfected praise with understanding. Write your prayer requests, the issues of concern on the ground. Put a worship song, roll before God there get up and begin to dance and dance papa hagin met bishop oyedepo and he said we mentored you on faith and yet god has brought you great increase how did this happen and bishop oyedepo replied him and said by the grace of god sir i danced everyone into this tabernacle that you see when you pray then you praise Praise is powerful. Let it let the praise of God not go away from your mouth. Sing praises with understanding. Sing praises with understanding. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Raise a song when you go back home. You wake up in the night and you're walking around and you are carrying the letter 
they just sat you present it to God drop it on the ground there dance before him Africans we do that a lot those in the West don't see much of that but Africans you know what happens during weddings there are this group of people who can wear their uniform and have these talking drums it happens in most cultures especially the Yoruba culture they see you and they begin to call your name and praise you you don't want to give them money they call your name and say something about you again <laughs> senator remember the building you did you want to enter the car they remind you you made a statement that you love all of us and they put pressure on your integrity and before you know it you will reach down unplanned listen a woman's dance removed the prophet's head as prophetic as he was Herodias danced her way to a decision an option that was given to her and her evil mother told her to remove the head of John the Baptist I can tell you because I've done it myself there are miracles you go and try what I'm telling you and see not showmanship no lock yourself you and your maker cry and roll before him lord i bring before you my political career i bring before you my spiritual life i bring before you this need and begin to pray and roll write the name of your business write the issues of concern write the issues that is plaguing your spiritual life what kind of believer am i oh god you said we'll dream dreams i don't have any dreams and if i have a dream it's a demonic dream write it down pray and see what will happen that night praise number three the third key that provokes divine intervention is sacrifice sacrifice very powerful sacrifice seed faith is very powerful seed faith is not just about money pay attention Psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me 50 and verse 5 psalm they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice let me tell you this ask any great man whether in the secular or in the kingdom there are certain heights and certain results you can never command under the sun until sacrifice comes from you when you read psalms 126 from verse 1 to 6 it says when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream jump to verse 5 please verse 5 says they that sow in tears there is a kind of seed you don't laugh that's when you are giving isaac if it's ishmael you can laugh but when you are giving isaac you know this is isaac you sow in tears it says you shall reap in joy verse 6 he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing in the sheaves now let me confess and admit to you that i know that the issue of seed has gone through all versions and all kinds of imbalances and abuses here and there i know i know that people have been victims of all kinds of manipulations with the teaching on seed but just because a truth is exaggerated or misused does not mean it is not truth when truth is applied within the boundary of scripture and in truth and righteousness it works wonders you've heard me share my story for many of you who have listened to my teachings I remember a time when God needed to shift me. I was already in ministry and God was already helping me. I remember when God gave me an instruction that one day he was going to speak to me to carry a seed and take it to God's servant, Bishop David Oedeku. I wouldn't tell you the seed. And that morning, God gave me that instruction. I got up, got the available flight and went down. Cut the long story short, when I was done with everything I had to do, as I came out to enter the car, so I'll go and look for somewhere to rest and return the next day. The Holy Spirit told me to place my hand on the ground. There at Canaan land ground, when I placed my hand, 
he said son from today you have entered the overflow anointing not everybody will be honest to tell you the story behind their glory but please don't be mistaken behind every glory you see there is a story and there is a mystery behind that story sacrifice read the bible about kings who slew their children and an indignation rose against them and war ended sacrifice when done with understanding is powerful I have made sacrifices this ministry has made sacrifices you cannot imagine and I do it with joy and with understanding let me tell you what happens to your seed when you sacrifice first Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 35 we don't have time but let me see if i can touch a bit on it please understand this mystery so that your sacrifice will become profitable many give in the body they just give just because a man of god challenged them to give sincerely so but in this kingdom results are governed by the understanding that sponsors that action if you just act without understanding if you really get a result it's just the mercy of god but some will say how are the dead raised up so he's talking about resurrection please pay attention and with what body do they come paul insulted them i will insult you that which thou sowest is not quickened except it dies follow carefully so there is a relationship now between resurrection and death are we together next verse please let's save time media help us please next verse but God giveth it a body as it pleased him and to every seed its own body hmm. all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of men there is another flesh of beasts and of fishes and of birds uh-huh there is also a celestial body and a terrestrial body but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another uh -huh. two or three more verses there is one glory of the sun and another of the moon the glory of the stars and one different from another pay attention their glories are not the same we'll stop at 43 he said so also is the resurrection of the dead he didn't say dead bodies the dead you sow it in corruption but it is raised in incorruption last verse it is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness and it is raised in power this is a mystery one time i was spending time with the lord and the word of the lord came to me and gave me a mystery behind sacrifice the bible says our seeds have the power to die and have the power to come back to life only jesus demonstrated that the ability to die and come back to life that means it is possible that i can tie any season i do not like to my seed and as i sow that seed if that seed dies everything connected to it must die are you getting the point now i can take the season of disfavor i can take the season of shame and tie it to my seed with understanding and sow that seed when that seed dies that season also dies and the bible says there is a unique expression of the law of seed faith and sacrifice in this sense because when you sow you don't only reap more of what you sow you can change what you want to see still by sowing you can sow favor and reap more favor but you can sow shame and exchange it for honor that means i can take all the unfavorable seasons in my life ministry business career and by faith you drop it and expect that season to die 
and all of a sudden a new season begins to open as your seed grows it's a powerful mystery you see why it's dangerous to steal money in the house of god because you don't know what season someone is trying to kill and if you do not allow that seed die you thought you just stole 10 naira look at gehazi you now see what happened to gehazi he thought he was just collecting money he was collecting leprosy just because the leprosy left naman did not mean it left the earth he was still there waiting for a volunteer and a man's greed pushed him i have ended seasons in my life ended circles in my life ended patterns in my life by the power of sacrifice with understanding it's a practice that i will continue to do for as long as i live discernment again you've heard my story that i was in joss many years ago and i went to buy sugar cane and i saw two women it was not much old women and i pleaded with them that let me i just wanted to honor them they were mothers i said please let me pay for them they also wanted to buy it they were beckoning on me trying to remove their money from their wrappers i said please let me pay for you and then i paid for them and the women began to bless me quite honestly i didn't hear what they said but one of them looked at me and said my son forever walk upon gold sacrifice works when it is done with understanding many of us have not risen to a new level because we are not ready those who are unbelievers call them they will tell you they know whether you are born again or not meet great people christians or non-christians they will admit to you that there must be a sacrifice dimension in the equation of your success when you see a man rise beyond the threshold know that there was sacrifice there whether it is a demonic sacrifice or it is a godly sacrifice i assure you no man can rise beyond a threshold just like that look at the father when the father wanted many sons in glory he carried his own son jesus his own son the father did not say i stand as the holy one seated upon an ancient throne be free from sin even when jesus turned to him and said eloi eloi lamak sabachthani father this eternal relationship that has never been severed he said for the sake of the harvest that is coming i want to end the reign and the dominion of sin and not even your face will make me change my mind sacrifice you know why abraham is called the father of all nations we sing and jump abraham's blessings are mine he said if you are abraham you will do the works of abraham abraham take now thy son thy only son whom thou lovest imagine a man dragging his son abraham where are you going i'll see you in the evening and the son says father where are we going he says, just follow me obedience is better than sacrifice and he's carrying him on. the son says i see the wood i see the fire where is the lamb and he said jehovah jireh do you know what it meant for abraham to lay his son and the child will be saying father what did i do if i sinned against you wouldn't you tell me to say sorry abraham imagine what you would go back and tell the journalists imagine what you would go back and tell the pressmen imagine his marriage was it was obviously going to end what would he tell sarah your 25 year old project all the mockery and the shame because a spirit spoke to you let me tell you what made god to swear a blessing on abraham and god was watching romans chapter 4 there's no time but when you read there it tells you the contemplations of abraham that abraham had planned that when he kills isaac he would beg god to bring him back so that he would take him back to the mother and give him in peace i've obeyed you now please save me from the trouble that is waiting for me at home sacrifice there are times that your seed will have to be the weapon that ends certain yokes in your life 
there are times not emotional things with understanding lord i'm tired of this level i am tired of this level of grace i'm tired of this level of oil i'm tired of this level of growth i'm tired of this level of hearing you sacrifice he says let no man trouble me for i bear in my body the mark there is a mark there are people who are recognized both by the realm of the spirit and this realm i've had the privilege and i don't mean to insult your pedigree forgive me if i sound arrogant this call upon my life has exposed me to many successful people i've had the honor and the privilege of praying with many people and every time i meet great people i don't just talk as a man of god i like to listen to their stories what happened and i'm listening sometimes they are laughing i'm not i'm not i'm not interested in all the somewhere in the story there will be a punchline. and then i did this and then god gave me an instruction i did this it may not all be money there was a time many years ago that god gave me an instruction i prayed for 72 hours non-stop my eyes did not see the sun i didn't know whether it was morning or night i did not check my time don't trivialize 72 hours even if this is what you are doing for 72 hours it is a lot of work 72 hours because we needed to end some seasons and step into certain seasons I was teaching the school of ministry student yesterday we we're discussing the anointing <clears throat> and i was telling them that when you have a little extension wire connected you can hold the extension wire with your hand and even if there is a spark it will not be serious but when you see a high tension cable there are people who held it and remained there till they dried up that's how men can become you can become an extension wire that has little or nothing coming from it or you can become a high tension cable in the spirit the difference sacrifice you don't just look at people and say be healed it's not everything that is a gift there are things that are rewards you will have to stay with the spirit sacrifice of prayer sacrifice of the word the discipline and the constraints i don't want to sound arrogant to begin to tell you the things that i have done for this kingdom but brothers and sisters hear me many of you are in need of interventions there are some of you following online you want to break circles you want to break patterns god is speaking to you not without a sacrifice it is true sacrifice the prophets of Baal, remember at Mount Carmel, the last card that they used to bring Baal down was sacrifice. Elijah said, I give you morning till evening. Do whatever you know to do to invite him. They tried everything. They started by prayer. They danced around. Remember, nothing happened. When evening was coming, they say, there's something we know about the realm of the spirit. If Baal will not wake up to our prayer, if he will not wake up to our singing, give us a knife. And the Bible says they started cutting themselves. Have you seen traditionalists do these things? They make incisions because they want to invoke powers. They cut themselves like animals. And Elijah said, your God is sleeping. When it was now time, Elijah said, get out of the way. The time for the evening sacrifice. That was the time Elijah called God. He didn't just stand and say, God, come. Mm -mm. He waited till it was the time of the evening sacrifice. And he said, bring these bullocks for me. He sat on an altar, put sacrifice there, poured water, and called upon the God who answers by fire. And fire came from heaven, licked everything. When your life becomes an offering and a sacrifice, then you walk in signs and wonders. Then God will give you a grace and an anointing, not just for a church, not just for a city but for nations i tell you the truth anybody who loves you sincerely will not lie to you not everything is just free that you pick up on the ground there in jesus name there are sacrifices 
that follow certain graces graces and anointings and possibilities are in levels there are graces for regions there are graces for nations there are graces for continents all of them come by sacrifice can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism the last key and then we pray has god blessed us tonight so number one the prayer ministry of the believer two praise three sacrifice for the prophetic the fourth key that provokes divine intervention is the power of prophecy isaiah 42 and verse 22 please get ready to pray isaiah 42 and verse 22 and this is a people robbed and spoiled they are all of them snared in holes they are hid in prison houses they are for a prey and none delivereth they are for a spoil and none say yet restore the prophetic was given as a spiritual advantage to help believers rise and ultimately advance the purposes of god the bible says in hosea chapter 12 you read from verse 11 down to 13 hosea chapter 12 11 to 13 let's go to verse 12 very quickly jacob fled into the country of syria israel served for a wife and for a wife he kept the sheep 13 and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt it was the lord that brought them but he used a prophet and by a prophet was he preserved by a prophet the prophetic ministry is powerful don't mind the imbalances here we're all students in the school of the spirit growing but if you ignore the prophetic there is a limitation to the dimension that you can rise in life when jesus christ was born as the logos of god there were two people who spoke to him one was a priest called simeon another was a prophetess called anna there is a reason why they spoke when jesus was about to begin his ministry there was a prophet called john you call him the baptist he was the prophet at every major season in his life there were prophetic voices that spoke to him prophecy is powerful it reveals and it creates the revelatory dimension of prophetic strengthens your faith it gives you hope it gives you direction but the most superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of the prophetic where it makes what has no business happening to happen by this time tomorrow he said are we together for time's sake i'll stop here we're going to pray the mystery of divine intervention the lord needs to arise over families the lord needs to arise over individuals there are many of you who came here bleeding and crying and saying god please speak to my situation i'm tired of this situation god has brought you a word tonight it is a spiritual arsenal that you must add and teach believers around you that as we sojourn in this our faith work we will meet with circumstances that defy science circumstances that defy intellect we will need to outsource help from a realm that is beyond the three-dimensional realm at that point you will need divine intervention please rise up on your feet two prayer points for tonight and then we're done prayer point number one father arise arise and wipe my tears arise and take away shame and reproach from my life please pray with understanding please rise up and pray please pray lord arise arise in the name of jesus christ over my spiritual life over my finances over my destiny Arise in the name of Jesus Christ over my family. Lord, arise. 
over this issue of concern. Please pray. Outside, pray. Online, make sure you are praying. Arise, so called. And let your enemies be scattered. Arise, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, arise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second prayer point, we are going to obtain grace. The Bible says, now that you know these things, happy are you if you do them. It is not just knowledge, but it is doing. At the point of action, that's when the integrity of God is committed. You are going to obtain grace grace for prayer grace for praise grace for sacrifice grace to honor and receive the prophetic lift your voice please and pray obtain grace from heaven in the name of jesus the son of the living god someone is praying someone is obtaining grace Lord, pray to be on fire. As far as my prayer life is concerned, as far as my work study life is concerned, in the name of Jesus, grace to offer the sacrifice of praise as an incense of worship and as an instrument of deliverance and victory. Grace, the power to lay down, the power to lay down, the power to bury season, the power to end negative season in my life, in my family, in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, I open up my spirit to the ministry of the prophetic. Let it shift me. I open up my spirit to the creative and the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please listen to me. Don't be in a hurry to leave. I want to speak over your life. Prophecy is very powerful. I am a product of prophecy. When a prophetic word truly by God comes your way in one moment one moment a prophet said by this time tomorrow when he said so another man who the king leans on said even if god opens the window of heaven might this happen he saw it but he did not step into it the bible says despise not prophesyings we are made by the word we are made by prophecy we didn't make ourselves there were voices that became prophetic ladders for us to climb to where we are. And God has granted us such measure of grace to also lift others. Please listen to me. Every word you are going to be hearing, I want you to believe. I want you to receive. You don't have to kneel down. Let your heart be opened truly. Don't just say amen. Before I make that prophetic declaration, very quickly we have one minute for you if you are here and you are saying apostle on hearing you speak the holy ghost began to convict me to make my ways right with jesus there's no point wasting time i know that i need jesus i'm tired of running my life at my own terms i need to make it right with jesus maybe a family maybe a young person maybe an old person all alike following from zaria all across the world here in abuja aside from those outside and the various overflows you can come in front of your projector screen very quickly i want to give you one minute wherever you are take that bold step come and stand before me here very quickly let's honor them as they do so quickly don't wait for someone to come be the first summon that courage and come please come come very quickly very quickly come you're all I want. Keep clapping. You're all I've ever needed. Come to Jesus. 
by television from the screen or wherever I want to pray for you thank you for coming you are worth our sacrifice you are worth our time of stay here we do this because we love Jesus please if you can lift your right hand let it be from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem and you who is following online by television you're following on the internet I want you to pay attention make this decision wherever you are let Jesus know that you mean business with him. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe that you are the son of God. Tonight, I make you my savior, my Lord, my king. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, and the grave is broken from my life from today. I am a recipient of the life of God. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Father, thank you for these ones. I stretch my hands towards them and I pray according to scripture and by the authority of the word, I declare their sins forgiven. I declare that they are partakers of this life in the name of Jesus they have become members of this great fold and I pray in Jesus name that the grace that lifts may that grace lift them the power to walk in victory let it be released upon you you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus thank you for making this great decision now I like you to follow the gentleman there's a gentleman holding a placard all of you you'll see a gentleman holding a placard to your right or to your left please follow them very quickly they'll just have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat very very quickly let's celebrate them one more time as we prepare to receive the prophetic word hallelujah are you ready to receive we have been commanded to bless Balaam said We've been commanded to bless. In the name of Jesus, every pit you have found yourself in tonight, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and I speak to you. No matter how deep that pit is, come out of it now. Come out of it now. Come out of it now. Every negative situation surrounding your life, your family, your career, in the name of Jesus, my God and your God, my King and your King, my Deliverer and your Deliverer, I decree and declare over your life, be free from that yoke now. Be free from that yoke now. I stand upon the grace that God has given me and the grace of all our fathers of faith that we have so partaken of by God's grace and from this corporate anointing I speak to you every door that has refused to open over your destiny we speak to that door be open now whatever has affected your passion for God your prayer life your word study life in the name that is above all names fresh fire from the throne let it land on you now number two 
anyone praying and anticipating your downfall so that they will rejoice and say we said it in the name of jesus christ shame and reproach will be their portion forever can i pray for you he said master we have toiled all night he said nevertheless everywhere you have tried and tried and failed i call upon the god of heaven who is the helper and the lifter of men go back and succeed go back and succeed spiritually go back and succeed financially go back and succeed in the name of jesus christ and i declare if there is anything connected to bloodline connected to foundations connected to ancestry connected to territory holding you back i will not release you to go i cut that chain right now forever i prophesy to you be blessed in the name of jesus i declare you will rise to a position of influence that will surprise you access to systems and structures in the name of jesus christ hear me believers anyone who fights you goes down instantly and everyone who needs to be used by god in this season as an instrument of deliverance to bail you out of any kind of shame and reproach in the name of jesus i call forth their ministry over your life enjoy the ministry of angels enjoy the ministry of men enjoy the ministry of angels enjoy the ministry of men enjoy the ministry of angels enjoy the ministry of men in the name of jesus by this time next week you will stand here and testify of the wonder working power of god go back to a realm of deliverance a realm of lifting a realm of fire command results command results supernatural results in the name of jesus christ every veil covering your glory so that you are just moving i tear that veil in the name of jesus every spirit that has closed scripture towards you so that even though you are opening your bible you are not seeing anything i declare let the scrolls be opened let the scrolls be unlocked let the book be opened in the name of jesus every spiritual laziness trying to destroy your life so that you become a victim of the onslaught in this season in the name of jesus i declare those spirits are far from you and let me prophesy upon you the spirit of death whether by accident whether by sickness whether by plane crash whether by the activities of wicked men whether by enchantments and evil incantations may it be far from your habitation everything that you have seen in your visions you know it has been released from heaven but for whatever reason your hands has not held it i stand by prophecy in partnership with the holy ghost i push it to your hands i push it to your hands i push it to your hands in the name of jesus christ please wave your hands in one minute and give jesus praise father we honor you father we honor you give him praise wave your hands let it be a wave offering lord i wave because i believe you you have done it and i give you praise amen 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 in jesus name thank you so much apostle for this word for this divine revelation you will agree with me that we are spiritually fed and i pray for apostle this morning that the Lord will bless you, bless your ministry in the name of Jesus. 
the hand of the Lord shall rest mightily upon you for good in the name of Jesus. You will do exploits in this kingdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, sir, once again, and we bless God for your life. Apostle said, having divine intervention in our lives, we'll all have access to the power of God and will begin to have one level of victory and dimensions of victories in life. That's so deep. May we continue to enjoy God's divine intervention in the name of Jesus. May we have victories all around us in the name of Jesus. And may every door that refused to open hear the word of the Lord in our lives in the name of Jesus. And if you are new here, welcome my brothers and sisters. This is Salvation TV. This is a platform for spiritual growth and edification of the body of Christ in the Middle East welcome and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel when you do please press the notification button so that you can get to know when we upload new messages and the lord bless you in the name of jesus and don't forget to share like and comment please share this lovely message with our friends and family let us propagate the word of god and when we do so we are doing heavenly mandate because he told us to go and spread the news around the world so Please share this wonderful message on our various platforms and the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.